Hey, what's going on friends? It is Slash6870 here back at it again with another PC build guide video. Today what I have here is a $500 PC. $500 is a very good budget. We're going to get a great CPU, GPU combination and overall for the money, you're going to be doing great. This should be able to play most games at medium to high settings, 1080p, 60 FPS. So as far as price to performance goes, you're going to be A-OK -okay with this $500 gaming PC. So before we get into the parts, be be sure to slash that like button right now before we get into the video because the more likes I get, the more views I get, and the more views I get, the more I'm able to actually build these PCs in real life and benchmark them for you guys. And that's what this is all really all about. It's about the performance of these PCs and when I get the likes, when I get the views, I'm able to actually build them. I really like it a lot and I'm sure you guys like watching it a lot. So if you could do that for me, I'd really appreciate it, but let's get into the video. Starting off with the CPU, I have an Intel Core i5-4460, it's clocked at 3.2 GHz, it's a quad-core Intel CPU, it's a socket 1150, so I mean it's not real old, but it is last gen, it's not one of the new Skylake CPUs, but it still is very very good for the price, and one of these lower end budget builds like a $500, $400, $600 PC, I would recommend skipping out on the Skylake CPUs and going for something like this 4460 because the RAM's gonna be cheaper, because you're using DDR3, the motherboard's gonna be cheaper, and overall the CPU's cheaper. So it really does fit well into a $500 build, a CPU like this. So uh, for only $174, we're getting a very, very good CPU in the Intel Core i5 44 460. It's clocked at 3.2 gigahertz and it turbos up to 3.4. So no problem as far as the CPU goes. Very good in a $500 budget. Next up for the motherboard, I went with an MSI H81M P33 Micro ATX motherboard. It's a socket 1150 to support our CPU. Uh, it's only $41, but it has very good ratings. It has 26 ratings and four and a half stars. So can't go wrong with that. You're going to get two memory slots, which is what we need for our memory. Um, no SLI crossfire support though, but as far as motherboards go, it is kind of a bare minimum, but we really don't need anything more than that. It's going to fit our GPU, it's going to fit our CPU, and it's going to let us do everything that we need to do when we're building this PC. So for only $40, it fits into this budget perfectly. Next up for the RAM, I got a kit of crucial 8 gigabyte DDR3 1600 megahertz RAM. It comes in two 4 gigabyte sticks so you can take advantage of dual channel memory. It's only $29 right now. RAM's just getting cheaper and cheaper. It's honestly ridiculous. Only $29 for 8 gigabytes of DDR3. Uh, a few years ago, that would be $50, but RAM prices have all come down. It's very good for the consumer. So we're going to go with 8 gigabytes of RAM in this PC. For the storage, I went with the Seagate Pipeline HD 500 gigabyte hard drive. It's 5900 RPM, so it's not the fastest speed hard drive out there, but we had to cut back on the hard drive. I wanted to get a one terabyte, but it simply would not fit in the budget. I would recommend getting one or two terabytes of storage if you can fit it into your budget, but all I could fit in in this PC was a 500 gigabyte hard drive. It's just the sacrifice I had to make. It was only $37. But as far as gaming goes, it's not going to be able to store too many games. So I would recommend a one or two terabyte hard drive if you can manage to fit it in your budget. But for this build, it's going to cut it. It fits the budget. 500 gigabytes really isn't that bad, but uh, you definitely would want more if you're going to be gaming seriously. So next up for the GPU, the most important part of this gaming PC, I went with an EVGA GeForce GTX 960 4 gigabyte VRAM model super clocked video card. For only $170, this is a very good deal, very good for mid-range 1080p gaming. Uh, GTX 960 is based on the Maxwell architecture. It's going to be very power efficient, very overclockable, and like I said, it is the 4 gigabyte of VRAM model instead of the uh, typical 2 gigabyte of VRAM model. So you are going to have a little bit of leeway as far as VRAM goes, which is very good for uh, as far as future proofing goes. You're going to be good for high res textures and stuff like that down the line, which is always very, very good. For the case, I went with a Thermaltake VL8001WT2Z ATX mid-tower case. It's only $23. It's pretty much just a cheap mid-tower case I found. Um, it's nothing really special, not any kind of great cable management, not a lot of spots for fans, but 
It's only $23 and it's a mid tower case, so I was kind of forced to buy it. It's not bad, but it's not great. Lastly, for the power supply, I got an EVGA 500 watt 80 plus bronze certified ATX power supply. For only $35, this is a very, very good power supply. 500 watts is going to be plenty to power this build. It's 80 plus bronze certified, so it's going to be efficient. And overall, EVGA makes great power supplies, and for $35 to finish up this PC, it's gonna work a-okay. So that's the PC, guys. You will expect about uh, medium to high settings, 1080p, 60fps with a system like this. So for only $500, I'd definitely call that a good deal, good price to performance. So if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments section down below. The members of the Slash Think Tank will help you out. We have some very nice gentlemen who are going to help you with all your questions, all your needs, and... Uh, I'll even reply to you if you have a serious question you gotta ask. So, uh, follow me on Twitter, by the way. Twitter's in the description. And be sure to like this video, and be sure to subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.